just so happened, coincidence, that Monsignor Kasha from the Archdiocese of Detroit in St. James Parish in Novi, which is a lovely suburban area of Metro Detroit, happened to be on today for our Feed My Sheep segment. And I want to thank you, our listeners, and please keep the suggestions coming. This, this started out, in case you haven't heard about this segment, which has been very well received, it started out as a result of the um, devastating Supreme Court decision regarding marriage that came out, of course, on June 26. And many people were saying, wow, um, after that weekend, they did hear amazing, and they, you know, they, these are the people who are trying to support their priests and help them and encourage them, that there were a lot of really good homilies that priests were teaching. And there were others who said, you know, I really want to hear from my bishop, my priest, my deacon. And so we decided, you know what, let's encourage one another because what we can do to help our priests and our deacons and our bishops preach the truth in love is to encourage them. We all need encouragement. Granted, you know, we shouldn't need encouragement to go out and witness. We're supposed to do it regardless. If we look at what you know, the early Christians went through, right, they didn't wait around, you know, for compliments. But the point is it is great to have encouragement, and it gives you the shot in the arm that you need uh, to go before, and especially in this very post-Christian culture that we live in, to go before your congregation or to write an article whatever to preach the truth and love and so to make a long story well i guess even longer one of our um, parishioners at saint james in the archdiocese of detroit sent me this beautiful uh, bulletin article that was done by our guest monsignor kasha who is now the pastor at saint james and all about the readings from august 16th which why god's plan and we'll get into the readings why god's plan always is the best plan for us i'm summarizing it uh, but just really, really good words of encouragement and wisdom tied into the Planned Parenthood undercover videos. And so I bring to you our next contestant, as I was teasing Monsignor Kasha, uh, Monsignor John Kasha from St. James. Uh, Monsignor, good to talk to you again. Good to be on your show. Thank you. And how are things at St. James in suburban Detroit? Well, they're doing well. We're, lots of things are going on here. Of course, we're getting ready for the start of religious ed in a few weeks and uh, gearing up for the beginning of the school semester and so forth. So lots of activity here. In now addition you, to all kinds of you know, usual things like you know parish fundraising and things like that. So. Yeah. Um, now, your article is very, very good, and you really kind of um, outlined the whole situation with Planned Parenthood and the understanding of church teaching with this. What kind of reaction, I, I'm just curious, did you get from the piece in the bulletin? Well, actually, uh, this usually when I write my articles, that's like a preview of the upcoming homily. So people, unfortunately, some of them pick up the bulletin before Mass, and they read the article before Mass, and it's reinforced in the homily. Or if they've heard the homily, they can go back, pick up the bulletin, and, and get a summary kind of of the homily. So I got a lot of positive reaction from people. And they said, well, it's about time we've heard things from the pulpit. We were very clear. It's, it's very simple to understand. And people are very, very pleased to hear uh, the message, and I've gotten a lot of you know articles, or I should say, emails and phone calls, and people talking to me about the article. So yeah, I, I'm just reading from it here. Over the past several weeks, we have heard a lot of rhetoric surrounding the Planned Parenthood videos. I do not know anyone who has watched them who could say what is being done is a good thing. First, it's not in the best interest of the baby. It's not in the best interest of the mother. It's not healthy. It's not moral. It's not ethically any good that make ethical. It's not or any good that may come from harvested parts is negated by the means in which those parts are obtained. Moreover, Planned Parenthood advocates, advocates would say abortions only account for, quote-unquote, 3% of what Planned Parenthood does. Now, that, that statistic, just, that drives me nuts, Monsignor. First of all, it's so skewed. But if anyone is, said, yeah. well, it's only, we only do 3% of you know, killing people in another area, or, well, I have a company, but we only believe in um, you know, doing terrorism, sponsoring terrorism 3% of the time, no one would stand for that. Correct, correct. Yeah. And the, the other thing, too, is you know, back in, in the 18th century, the uh, people declared African Americans to be non-human. In 1939 to 1945, the Nazi regime deemed certain individuals to be non-human. In 1973, the Supreme Court declared a fetus to be non-human. And when we start declaring people non-human, it leads us on that dangerous path to really hurting not only the individuals, but hurting society in general. And just leads us down that path of more and more and more moral degradation and, and evil. So it's, it's a very difficult thing. And when you've watched these videos, and I've watched just parts of them because it's very difficult to watch, how can anybody say that's a good thing? 
how could anybody say that those videos um, are what a, a good country should be doing? What citizen, we shouldn't do that to citizens. We wouldn't be doing that. I mean, if we did that to someone that was already, you know, fully alive outside the womb, people would be horrified. But yet, because it's the baby in the womb, some people say, well, that's just a clump of tissue, which science has said from the very beginning, it's not a clump of tissue. This is a human being. You know, this is an ensouled being given as a gift from God to people. So it's very difficult to, to watch that. And I very often when I'm talking to people, I, I understand the pain that sometimes women feel a need to engage in abortive activity. But I always point to the fact that when we start doing that to the most vulnerable of our citizens, what does that say to us about us as a people? You know, ancient Sparta did that. They would expose female infants on the side of a mountain because they felt that males were more superior to women. Uh, you start doing that, and, just, and the society starts uh, desecrate, becoming uh, really on the road to perdition, and eventually destroys itself. Yeah. It's it's interesting to me in terms of the, the I'm so glad you got a positive response. Were there people who had not who read the article who had not seen or heard about the undercover videos? There were a few, um, but I think because of uh, what's been happening on the internet, you know, Facebook and so forth, those uh, videos are getting out and people are seeing them, or at least they're hearing about them. Um, and even people that are, you know, what I call somewhat pro-choice, even they start looking at the videos and say, this is wrong, this is really evil. So, I mean, it's a good thing that those videos have come out. Uh, it's bad to see what's happening, but I think there's a, you can take, you know, God's working through that evil to help us to see how evil it really is, and he's helping us to start up having a voice and getting out into the world and preaching the good news, the gospel. It's interesting, isn't it, how all of this is, is being revealed, and then the Holy Father comes out um, yesterday and talks about the sacrament of reconciliation, and specifically women who've had abortions. I, I, the Holy Spirit is working here big time, I think. Yes, and in fact, when you know, around the, the decision of Roe versus Wade, you know, mid-January, when I preach about abortion, usually there's an uptake in the confessional of women who come, mm. uh, and even some men who come to the confessional and confess that they've had an abortion or, pro or helped to procure an abortion. And it's a great opportunity for God's grace to bring these people back into the church and also to to get them on the road to conversion and really living their life the way God intended. And so even out of this negativity, we can see God's work in progress. We can see the Holy Spirit speaking, and it's really a wonderful thing. You know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I know that, that many, and, and now that my husband is a deacon, some people say, well, you can't talk about this because it will get someone upset or you might hurt someone's feelings. And yet what you just said, Monsignor, is so important because after you talk about this, you have more people coming to the confessional. So imagine the healing that's occurring you speak from the pulpit, they go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and as the Holy Father indicated in his message yesterday, they can start taking those steps to come back into the church and, and you know, begin or renew their relationship with Christ. If you don't speak, if you don't speak, whether it's from the pulpit or if you know, a deacon or whomever doesn't talk about this in the bulletin, think of all the pain and the separation that's allowed to continue. And exactly, and, and I think there's a way of speaking about it in a way that, you know, brings people back. I always remind people, you know, Jesus, when he was speaking to the woman caught in the adultery, or the man that was sinful, or Zacchaeus, he always invites sinners to taste of God's mercy and God's love and God's forgiveness. And he always invites people. He doesn't condemn, doesn't cajole, doesn't criticize, doesn't point a finger. He merely invites, and then he says, go and sin no more. And I think that's a very a, a good approach to, to many people who've had abortion. They feel that the church is going to be condemnatory and pointing a finger and yelling and screaming. But if we just invite them to taste God's love and mercy, that can begin the road to conversion and holiness. And I think mm -hmm. that's a, a very good thing that the Holy Father has done. Yeah, especially if you think about the numbers. What is it, one in four? They say the statistic is one in four women in the pews in the churches have had uh, an abortion. So very important to speak about. All right, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and wrap up with 
uh, the latest installment of Feed My Sheep. And don't forget, please, if, if you've heard a great homily uh, from one of your deacons or priests, send us a link. I know many parishes actually record the homilies, and, and what we do is, is we go through them, and then we get the permission from the priest and the parish to air those homilies here on Catholic Connection. And we also share bulletin pieces, as we're doing this morning with Monsignor Kasha, his article from Pastoral Ponderings, the basis for our segment this morning. We'll be right back to wrap up with our latest edition of Feed My Sheep on Catholic Connection on a Wednesday. Stay tuned. Joan Lewis is still on vacation, and she will join us, I'm sure, hopefully next week with her segments. Traveling back to Rome, she's a Rome Bureau Chief. Wrapping up with Monsignor John Kasha from St. James in Novi, Michigan. Novi is a lovely suburb northwest of Detroit. It's a great little area if you're ever um, in suburban Detroit. It's a lovely, lovely community, Novi, Northville, Plymouth. That was what we would call the west side of the suburbs. Anyway, wrapping up our discussion with Monsignor John Kasha, who is pastor of St. James. And, of course, that's in the Archdiocese of Detroit. A terrific uh, parish bulletin article that he wrote was sent to me by one of his parishioners. And so we decided, well, this is the next installment of our Feed My Sheep segment. Monsignor, I want to go back to your pastoral ponderings from the weekend of August 16th. Morality is based on natural law and logic. The church teaches from experience. The church is not out to get anyone. The church is not waging a war on women. Far from it. The church wants all men and women to experience the love of Jesus Christ. Morality and ethics stem from an innate sense of right and wrong. However, in today's society, right has become wrong and wrong has become right under the guise of being politically correct or inclusive of everyone. Yes, Jesus loves everyone, but he also challenges those who are engaged in sinful behaviors to change their ways. And I think that's what people forget. It's interesting, in in light of the Holy Father's uh, message on confession yesterday, I was talking to a producer from one of the network news programs who was possibly going to interview me and, and to yesterday or in the future, but she was saying, but isn't it great that he's changing everything? Isn't it great that he's really opening you know, the doors to mercy and this is all new and that anybody can come in? And I said, well, first of all, this is nothing new. And yes, he's talking about mercy, but he also talked about the fact that abortion is still a grave sin and that people have to understand what they've done. And so sometimes people think that Jesus was just this really nice guy who said, you know, no problem, go talk amongst yourselves and you know, have a nice life. They forget the part where he told the adulterous woman, your sins are forgiven, but go and sin no more. Correct. And that's the issue, is that and people, you know, they, they like to think of Jesus as, you know, the image portrayed by Godspell or Jesus Christ Superstar or any of those movies from the 50s and 60s, and they forget that Jesus was the Son of God, and he, he knew people's hearts. And he knew when people were um, kind of um, trying to pull the wool over his eyes. He challenged the Pharisees all the time who tried to trap him in his words. But he also knew people's hearts who were truly contrite. Zacchaeus, the sinful woman, all these different people in in the Gospels who came to him seeking healing and forgiveness because they reached out to him or he reached out to them. There was a conversion, there was a spark of... God's wisdom planted in them, and they said, you know, what I've been doing is not right. I'm going to change my ways. I mean, Zacchaeus is a perfect example. He recognizes his sin. He knows he's been doing wrong. And so he says to Jesus, "Um, I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to become a better example to my people. And that's what it's all about. That's I think Pope Francis is very clear. You know, the we have everybody's a sinner. The Pope would even say that himself. He witnessed that very early on in his pontificate when he went to confession, surprising everybody. And he went to confession showing the way that confession can be a very cleansing, healing, forgiving act of mercy that draws us closer to the heart of Jesus Christ. And that's what's really important about the sacrament, about about this year of mercy that's coming up as well. Hmm. Monsignor, so good to talk to you again, and thanks for all you do. And, and keep writing these articles and, and speaking the truth uh, from the pulpit. Think of all the people you've helped, especially in the area of women and men coming back to the church who were tied, of course, uh, to the sin of abortion. Uh, they're on their way home. Um, they've been forgiven, and now they can you know, renew their relationship with God. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. Good to talk to you again. Oh, and don't forget to call Monsignor McClory, or, or he owes you a call. I think he wanted me to get that message to you, so just saying. Just pass okay. that on. Okay. Will do. <laughs> 
Thank Thanks you very so much. much. God bless you. Monsignor John Kasha, who is the pastor of St. James in Novi, Michigan, in suburban Detroit. And please uh, continue to send us... Uh, if you have a deacon who's given a great homily, uh, a priest or your bishop, um, send us you know, the information and we will do our best to track it down. If you can send us the link to the homily, if it's been recorded, or in the case of the prisoner from St. James, uh, she sent me the link to Monsignor's article, which was very helpful, so we're able to read that uh, part, part, parts of it to you. We would like to do that so we can help others be strong in speaking the truth in love anywhere. Of course, the religious from the pulpit, from the bulletin, or all of us, because we're all called to evangelize. Have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow on a Thursday with Dr. Pia and Dan Gaynor on media coverage, or lack thereof, of Planned Parenthood. Stay tuned. You've been listening to Catholic Connection with Teresa Tamio. Catholic Connection is a co-production of Ave Maria Radio and EWTN Radio and carried across the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Our producer is Andrew Kruchek. For copies of this program or for more information, visit AveMariaRadio.net. That's A-V-E Maria Radio.net. Thanks for listening and join us next time for another edition of Catholic Connection.